Hey all, my name is Kurt. I'm here with Trenton. Welcome to SLB Basement Bourbon Bar. And today, Trenton, we're gonna we're gonna discuss a topic that we should have covered a long time ago. We're gonna dive into your expertise. My expertise. Your, your expertise. I don't know expertise. what expertise I have. Your your methods. I almost said melons for some reason. Your Let's methods. Not do that. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> your your methods on yeah. on tasting and and smelling some some liquid. Well, what I can say is this, Trenton. This is the honest truth. Out of the most asked questions that I've ever received via comments or instant messages or even, you know, eye-to-eye -eye conversation, the very, the, the top one that I get the most questions about is what does SLB stand for? That's number one. It yep. stands for strong like bull. Long story, different video. Yes. So we'll move on from there. The second most asked question is, how can I improve my nosing and tasting skills? Or how, and, and a lot of times say, how can I get like you guys where you can pick this stuff up? It's gotta be mostly about you. Cause it's like, I'm picking up grass, <laughs> basketballs, mushrooms. But Nobody it, wants to taste and smell that. But it's what you associate. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, why, it's how you, I mean, I know you're out in left field sometimes. I, I get that, I, I get that, well, but it's what you associate you know, what you're smelling and tasting. Now, let me just say this right off the bat before we, re we really get into the, to the core of what we want to discuss here, but we're not professionals, not at all. You know, what, we, what we've done down here, you know, between Trenton and I has just been, you know, we've kind of taught ourselves. Let's just say that. Yeah. Uh, we've never claimed to be professionals, nor will we ever in the future claim that we're just a couple of guys down here hanging out in the basement drinking some good whiskey and, and and doing what we love to do the most is sharing it with the good folks out there sometimes so, bad whiskey though yeah sometimes, sometimes it's bad too so uh, let's just start by saying this Trenton there's three ways to enjoy whiskey and I broke it down to three different ways right yeah smelling or nosing as our good friend Robert would say you're saying it incorrectly oh, yeah. If you say nosing, because we failed that part of the test. That's not an action. Nosing is not an action. Smelling is, but smelling, smelling the whiskey, tasting the whiskey, and into the finish. So you so know, the finish is the third third aspect. Okay. Correct. And you know that's for me the simplest way, and I've got to go the simplest way. So those are the three, you know, core factors of enjoying a sip, or a pour, or a dram of whiskey. Okay. So from there, we'll break it down to each one quickly and go through, you know, what helped me, what might have helped you. We didn't even discuss this, did we, Trent? No. We, I just came, he just came down and I said, I'm a little this is, nervous. This is kind of what we're going to do. I don't, right? I don't have a method to my madness. I just <laughs> stick my schnoz in there and whatever, whatever comes out of my mouth. Well, <laughs> <that's>... <laughs> I'll be asking you some questions along the way and it okay. might, you know, it might fuel your brain into you know thinking you know different things what might have all helped right. you or what you do or how you do it all right that ought to be entertaining enough just to just to hear that from you i'm scared <laughs> all right let's go to the very first one we're using buffalo trace by the way i thought why not i mean buffalo trace 25 dollar bottle it's really really good stuff i mean it's good stuff a lot of people can find it now and again. Mm -hmm. So we decided to go ahead with this Buffalo Trace, you know, to use as our example today. So in nosing or in smelling the whiskey, how do you go about that, Trent? <laughs> Yum. No. Um, <laughs> at, at first, I'll be honest, like when I think so, one of the first tours Michelle and I went on was yeah. at um, Old Forester. Okay. And we did, like, we had the flight and stuff at the Old sure. Forester, all the, the whiskey row products and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I was smelling it, and the guy was the guy was kind of coaching us through it, because at that point I was fairly new into, um, I don't even think I was on the videos yet when we were doing that. Mm -hmm. But he was saying that it helps if you open your mouth, because I, I was just closing my mouth, yeah. taking a big old whiff, yeah. and I was, like, getting real in there at yeah. first. And he, he was, he was kind of giving me some pointers. He said, if you open your mouth a little bit, while you're smelling to introduce mm -hmm. a little bit more mm -hmm. air or whatever into yeah. the into the experience it really helps elevate those flavors yes and then two i can't remember exactly his his uh, methodology or whatever but instead of going like sticking your whole nose in there if you like mm -hmm. rest if you rest the the edge of the glass like up 
by the little indent in between your right. nose and lips. Uh -huh. That kind of helps ensure that it's a it's a good distance away and it also doesn't blow your socks off yeah, if that, it's too hot. That's a good point because if I if I'm smelling, you know, 130 proof whiskey, I'm I'm kind of getting it out here at first. <laughs> and you, know, you can't just a little be wary, but but instead of like <laughs> like you don't want to open your mouth like you're about to take a big old shovel of ice cream or something, right. but just like a little slit. Right. Just a little slit. And yeah, it's good. It, honestly, it's some like at the beginning it was hard for me to grasp how you even do that because mm -hmm. I was really thinking mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. And I was screwing it up and I was yeah. gasping on my own air. It was yeah. it was not pretty to watch. Good. But Listen, just just a little bit. Is all how good you thoughts. Typically go about all it. good thoughts, buddy. Well, for me, I'm a little different, and I know I've said it before, but the folks who haven't heard it. You know, I'm a little handicapped in the smeller department. I've had sinus surgery some years ago, and truthfully, I, you know, I, I, I smell things a lot less potent than most everybody. Uh -huh. I mean, really. I mean, it's just so. What I have to do to start with Trenton is I, I have to roll the glass. You know, a lot of people do the swirl. Yeah. Whatever, whatever works for you. I'm not opposed to either one. But what I do, what I like to do is roll the glass and that gets the whiskey on all the sides internally in the Glen Cairn. Then I like to leave it sit for, if you can, and if you have the time, I like to leave it sit for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. It just enhances that experience of smelling the aromas that's coming out of the glass for me personally, and I'm able to pick it up a little bit easier. So at first I would suggest either swirling the whiskey if that was you do. I've just gotten in the habit where I, you know, you probably see me a million times on the screen doing this. And that's why I'm doing it. I'm trying to get all that beautiful whiskey on the sides of the glass. So that, that helps me pick up aromas. One thing I'll say to you, like when, when you first started doing the, the roll, mm. I was like, what the heck are you doing? Mm -hmm. And then I, I I do like a combination of the two, especially when we're doing like a blind or something. Mm -hmm. We really make sure to jostle those around and mm -hmm. let them yeah. sit for a while. Sure. But if I'm at home, I'll like, I just do this out of habit if I'm holding yeah. a glass. Mm -hmm. I don't do it with like a water bottle or anything, yeah. but anything that's has whiskey in it, I just sure. do it. Yeah. It's out of habit now. Yeah. But I will like, before I actually start drinking it, I will give it a little bit of a roll. Oh. And I found that even though like, even though I haven't had sinus surgery and I can smell stuff potently. Yeah, you can too, for um, sure. <laughs> that's for unfortunately. Sure. Um, that still does help quite a bit enhance it because it's instead of you having to like really reach for like two inches down in the glass, it's up here yeah. quite a ways mm -hmm. and it, it just elevates yeah. that experience. It helps. I it think. helps. And, and I know a lot of folks say if you if you jostle the whiskey, it, you know, it, it kind of aerates and get mm -hmm. things moving in there too. And if that works for you, fine. That, that's not a problem whatsoever. Whatever helps you to get the aromas, you know, quicker and more potent and powerful, it, that's what you should start with. Now, for me, when I get in there, I'm just, I'm just, it depends. Like, I know this proof's going to be around 90 proof. I'm going to, I'm going to get kind of deep in there right away. If I know it's 130 proof, I'm kind of easing it in on the yeah. side a little bit, maybe. It's, it's definitely so, a circumstantial. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about it. And, and Trent made a good point too. When you're taking, when you're smelling, open your mouth, it kind of gets that air out and through so that you can, you can almost taste that, that aroma that you're, that you're smelling as yeah, well. So let the folks know what you're actually smelling in the glass because you know I, I know folks you know they hang on the edge of their seat to get your nosing and tasting notes. Honestly like it, it smells like a grape Laffy Taffy. It just it does. Yeah. It, it's something that I get on Buffalo Trace a lot. Some bottles more or less than the others but the, it's pretty consistent yeah. throughout. It's a real sweet candy-ish. Kind of thing. Yeah, candy ish. You know, I'm not real good with the candy notes like Trent is. I don't pick them up, you know, a lot. You know, for me, the first thing I'm going to get on here is some beautiful toffee note that mm -hmm. I always get with Buffalo Trace. But when Trenton talks about candy, when I put it back in there, I'm, yeah, I can, I know right where he's coming from. It'd be hard for me to pinpoint that grape laffy taffy though on my own. It just would. It does. It also helps tasting with other people. Because yes. everybody's palate's different. Absolutely. You said toffee. I was like, man, I don't get that second smell. I got a little bit of it, but yeah. still primarily yeah. like that Laffy Taffy note. And it's nice because everybody's got different experiences, different palates, sure. and that kind of adds sure. to the experience, yeah. especially if you're you're drinking with other folks. Yeah. All right, let's move on then, Trenton, to the to tasting. My favorite part. Yeah. 
and, and all I can do is speak from my own experience, okay? So I'm gonna give, try to give you a two minute synopsis of my own experience, all right? When I really wanted to learn more about it because I was just like anybody else, I'd sit down and I'd go, how do they do that? I'd be watching certain videos and reading, you know, reading reviews online. I'm like, these guys got like six or eight notes. How? Do, how? how? I'm, I'm struggling with any, with zero, truly. So what I did, and there's no books written on this or anything like that, but what I thought of my head, what I did is I would take a bottle of whiskey. Let's say it's this Buffalo Trace. I'd sit right down there on that couch, right? I would taste it. I would try to write a couple things of my own down. And then I would go and watch a video of somebody that I trusted or read a review online of somebody I trusted and see if I matched any of their notes. Okay. If I did, I was like, I got one, right? If I didn't, I would go back into it and see if I could find it just one. Just one of what they were looking for. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to train myself. And what helped me the most was, I can't even remember where I got this tip from, but somebody said, get a list of whiskey notes. Get a printed out list. That's a good idea. You know, walnut, pecan, peanut, toffee, caramel. I mean, the list goes tobacco, leather. Get you a list, print it out, put it in front of you. It's much easier to look at that and associate a flavor than it is to try to just pick it out of your head out of nowhere. That's true. So once I did that, I would then sit down the same bottle, you know, a, a different bottle, whatever, and I would try to taste it, and I would look in there, okay, yeah, I get that. I get walnut in that. Oh, I do. I get this. I get that. Then I'd also still look at the, the video and or the review, read it, whatever, and try to get better. That's all you can do is get better. Start slowly. Get one. That's a good, Just get one. What a good method. Then all of a sudden you might get two. And then you're doing this again. Right? <laughs> so that's kind of how I, and, I'm, and trust me, there's no right or wrong way, whatever works for you. But that's how I was able to get a little bit better. I'm still happy trying to, if I sit down with a new bottle, if I get two, I'm thrilled. If I get three, I'm doing a dance. I'm, I'm super excited. I've never gotten six or eight. That's just not me. I, I have never, probably, I don't think I can count if any times that I've gotten more than three notes. Mm -hmm. Usually it's one or two, mm -hmm. maybe three sometimes. Right. But it's it's something where it's like, as it sits, you know, it can definitely change in, mm -hmm. in the aromas and everything. But yeah. I usually don't. It's it's a it's something I enjoy. I'm not trying to, to try too hard at it. Not that yeah. like listing out six or eight notes or whatever yeah. is, is a bad thing. Yep. But my style is just I get one or two or maybe three. Yeah. I'm going in for the sip and that's yep. kind of how I do it. Well let's just take a sip of this. See what we got here. Yep. Buffalo Trace. He's good at that stuff. Jennifer, my first sip, Trenton, we, we've tasted this a million times. So mm -hmm. with a new bottle, the first thing I want to do is associate in general terms. Now, what I mean by that, is that oily? Is it viscous, the sip? Was it creamy? Was it thin? You know, those kind of things. What, what, what did it feel like? What was the feel in your mouth, your mouth feel? Was it hot? Did it burn? You know, that's what I think of. Was it sweet? Was it savory? So the very first sip, the only thing in my brain that I'm thinking of is general terms. That's it. General. Interesting. Yeah. That's a, I swear to you, that's a, the second sip I usually try to go with. If I give a tasting on the first sip, boy, that it's prominent. I mean, it's in my face. I'm like, you know, that usually doesn't happen. I'm usually first thinking of just simple general terms of what I feel about that particular whiskey. Well, I usually go about it like in the most complicated way, which is what can I associate this with in particular? Is this like a grape Laffy Taffy or something? And then I kind of break it down from there mm -hmm. instead of like picking out little small chunks and kind of going up the pyramid. I take yeah. one thing and I just kind of trickle down a little bit. Yeah. That hasn't always worked out, but it's just like... I, I usually don't pick, and I didn't, like, you You had said you, you sat down and you tried notes and you were watching videos and comparing, and that was your process. I sure did. Mine was, I just did it, yeah. and, like, the channel definitely helped in being around other people that were also whiskey drinkers helped also. Good point. I didn't really follow that, like, video format that, that you did or, or reading reviews or anything. Mm -hmm. I read reviews, but 
it wasn't a part of my process. It was, I'm gonna drink this and then I'm going to associate it with, with times or things that I've either tried or places I've been. And that's like why I get a basketball note like sometimes and just, I don't take it too seriously in that like it's, it's this is very enjoyable for me. Mm. And basketball, I mean, that's just, that's just what I got. I don't know in my life that I've tasted a basketball. Well, I probably what have. What was so weird is, is on that particular show, <laughs> what whiskey were we tasting? Do you remember? I don't remember. No, but... it was it was um, oh it was that Rossville Union Rye that hundred was that barley. What the weird thing was when he said that when he said basketball, I immediately said the outside ball with the urethane. Mm -hmm. the, 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 yeah, it, it made sense to me. Honestly, and I don't I don't you know I'm not trying to be the good dad or something like that. But Trenton is more talented when it comes to picking up. Yes, you are nosing and tasting notes than I am. I have to practice. I work on it. I don't work on it as much as I used to because mm -hmm. when we started getting into whiskey on the channel, I, mean, I was digging into it hardcore. Yeah, you know, I wanted to try to be as responsible as I could, but I still do it to this day. Every so often, especially you know, with something outside the box, an mm -hmm. American single malt. I want to learn. Oh. You know, I want to learn. Yeah, oh, stop. So, anyways, I still practice. Trenton, he's, he's he's more of a natural than I am, and some of you folks are, will be, some of you won't be. That's okay. We're all at different levels. We can all discuss it, you know, and, and that's what's so fun about it to begin with. So, just don't worry if you're not like Trenton. If you, if you can't pick that stuff up as quickly, and you do, you come out with some stuff that's like garden hose and things like that, and I, and I swear to you, a lot of it is fairly accurate. It's pretty freaking accurate. One thing I'll say, well, two things actually. There's a, there's a show on Hulu. I don't know if you've seen it. It's called like Sommelier or something, mm -hmm. and it's about it follows this group of, of folks that are trained to be master sommeliers, which is like wine tasters. Mm. And these guys are picking wow. up like freshly crushed rock. And some guy legit said a freshly cut garden hose, and I was like, what does that even mean? But like when you get into the thick of it, I can kind of understand. Sure. I didn't realize my palate was like that that I would pick mm -hmm. out stuff like that. But another thing is that if, if like if you're in a group with people and you're tasting and they're picking up stuff and you're having a hard time picking it up or you're getting something completely different, don't beat yourself don't beat yourself up over it. Yeah. I've seen messages from a couple of folks saying that they're getting frustrated because yeah, Jimmy's do, getting do this this flavor profile yeah. and Matt's getting this flavor profile and I'm getting something completely out of left field. One thing you gotta understand is your palate is completely different. What you may have eaten earlier in the day might have affected it. How much mm -hmm. sleep you got, how much water, like there's so many different factors that go yes, into that. Absolutely. And it's kind of like golf. You know, you go, you get up to the tee box, you take a swing and you whiff it, and then you just get so irritated that the rest of your holes just suck. That's kind of how, th that's honestly kind of how this can be. You you, you yeah. get frustrated, you can't yeah. pick something up, and yeah. it's just, it just goes yeah. by the wayside. Well, what's most important, honestly, is not really picking up notes and nosing and tasting notes. It's A, do I enjoy it? B, do I not? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's huge. That will further your journey in the right direction if you just say, not my bag. Yeah. Well, I wonder why, you know, and then once you accumulate several of those, not mine, well, why? What's over in this list that I don't like and what's over here on this list I do like? Yeah. Then you can gear your path towards what you like. Yeah, that's a good you know, way to think about so, it. So real quickly before we bring this to a close, Trenton, what do you get on your tasting notes here at Buff and on this Buffalo Trace bottle? For me, it's a tiny bit thin. So when I yeah. talked about viscosity, but we're talking a $25 bottle. So to me, it's a little bit thin. So in my generalities, a little thin, not bad, a little thin. It's more on the sweet side. It doesn't hit the savory notes for me, baking spices, you know, and tobacco, leather, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. It, it hits the sweet side of the tasting notes for me. It's kind of similar to the, the initial first part of the sip that I had. It was, I don't think, it's thin, but it's like an oily thin. It's kind of weird because it does coat your mouth still, mm -hmm. but it's not like you're going to be smacking your gums trying to get the, the oiliness out. A little bit of oak, a little bit of like a sweet grape, kind of mm -hmm. maybe a taffy kind of yeah, thing. Sure. It's not, it's not overly complex. It is nope. what it is. There's probably bottle. two or three things maybe yeah. I can pick up from that at the end, but... I like it. Yeah, for me, predominantly, it's a light caramel, light toffee note, and that candy note is in there, and the and the oak is there it as is. a supporting note, but it's not super sweet and rich, but it's also not pungent and sour. 
No, it's definitely there. It's almost there. right there and perfect for a $25 bottle. Yeah, I And that's my thoughts agree. of it, yeah. right there. So into the finish, I'm not getting a whole lot in the finish on this particular bottle, are you? No, it's, it's there and then it just kind of vanishes. <laughs> $25 bottle. Right. But then again, keep in mind, the finish can be completely different than some of your tasting notes that you've gotten too. So take yeah. a minute, after you take your sip, breathe in a little bit, in your mouth, out your nose. I don't do that. You don't? What do you do? Okay, when I take a sip. Uh-huh. I'm gonna spit this out. <laughs> I'm done. Oh, that's right. Before we got this fancy microphone, we had a microphone right down here. And anytime you would do that, it would be like <gasps> <laughs> It was like that, that's what you're doing. Okay, I remember now. <laughs> I'm just trying to <laughs> trying to pick up, you know, some notes on the finish. And, and usually for me, Trenton, I'm just going to be honest there. Usually it's a one note finish for me. And it's very general. I like it when a whiskey lingers into the finish. Mm -hmm. But I'm never going to pick up multiple notes on a finish. That's just not me. I I'm usually, not. I usually don't either. I'm not. That's just not me. So, it's usually one thing, and then I on the finish, I focus, like, how long does this thing mm -hmm. last? Am I yeah. still tasting it 10 seconds yes. later? Is it viscous, yes. and what's that lingering flavor, Yes, if any? Yes. That's kind of... Yeah. That's but, a, like I feel like that's bingo. a good majority of how you might rate something. Yeah. Because if the finish is bad, obviously nobody wants to leave with a with a, with yeah. a nasty note. It's like having a piece of burnt right. toast. I like burnt toast. And, and but, we've said it before. Uh, we've said it before, and to finish it, the oak is bitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, things like that. So... So that's just a few things that we do here. I hope it's been helpful for you. Again, we're not, we don't ins instruct people on this topic. You on don't want to see me instruct anybody on anything. <laughs> on a regular basis. But I've been asked this question so many thousands of times. I just figured it's time. We need, we need to get this video out there. And hopefully it's been helpful. So once again, you know, please go at your own pace. Some things may vary differently from what you've heard here in this video, and that's fine too. Whatever helps you further your journey and enjoy whiskey with all your friends and family, that's what's most important. And hopefully maybe something we said today might be helpful. I hope so. Yeah. All right, that's all we got for you today. As always, we ask you to please drink responsibly and see you next time right down here with Trent and I in the good old basement bourbon bar. See you later.